Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. We're working on a kind of, it's a fabric organizer, uh, a fellow uh, quilter, arts and crafts for you. The number four is for you. And her name is Gina. And I just watched her video the other day. Actually, one of my quilting buddies, Pam, uh, suggested the video for a weekend project. So I thought it was a good idea. It's a great little hostess gift to give to somebody or birthday gift or just even to keep your own stuff organized in your own little shop and it's just a little something got two little ties I just used some really satiny uh, bias tape that I had I probably should have sealed it on the other edge but that's that's you know it's just, this one's just for me uh, and I, I just chose to be choose a little bit of a uh, Christmas print to it so you can actually choose to do two solid pieces just make sure you're uh, you are measuring in your quarter spots or your, your in your thirds to make your stitches that's all we really need to do so we're gonna do one in red and white so here's my my backing which is this or, or sorry the inside here which is right there you use just a little bit of um, batting the the one in the video has you pressing it on like it's a sticky batting but I'm I have so much batting bits left over from the quilts and stuff from the quilt shop that I'm just using it and sewing it so sewing some pieces down so you're gonna kind of lay it out and if it's directional, you want to make sure all your fabric is directional, like I had on this one, the uh, reindeers and the trees and stuff like that, if you see that. So when it comes up together, they're all going to be like the same sort of thing, except that one was clearly upside down. I don't know. It's a lesson learned. Just work with it. <laughs> You'll have fun. <laughs> really, who's going to look and care? <laughs> So you want to put your, you have five of the solids, which is what's just going to be on the side and your bottom. And then you have a complementary or uh, another opposite color in the other four corners. And you're just going to sew this like a big old nine patch. Okay. So we're just going to attach these together and sew down. Just use a quarter, quarter foot. These are five inch squares. Uh, she said you could easily use a charm pack for this, but really you could use any size you like. You can go from 10 inch to 10 inch and have a big honking one and bring a capsule dish, you know, like, you know, come with food. <laughs> so. So it on the other side. Like I said, you could use big two, two big uh, squares. Uh, just make sure you're doing your marks where you need them because you're gonna, you need those lines as reference to sew these little bits together. You gotta pinch them, including your, your inside, and do little sews down the lines to give it that little, sh that little boxy shape, right? So, I don't know, it was really quick, it was fun. I thought it was really kind of cute. And uh, it got something done today. Like, we got it done in the show. <laughs> None of this waiting stuff. <laughs> now, right now. <laughs> That's how I want it. <laughs> Very much looking forward to tomorrow's live stream with uh, a little bit more cutting. I only got a couple more colors to cut from all those 32 fat quarters for the uh, prepping our quilt materials. Very excited about getting that going again and getting actually some sewing done. I don't mind the cutting part. It's okay. The ironing is, uh, <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> some people like it, some people don't. So, you know, I love, I love getting to the sewing part. Like this part here where you're putting things together and you're seeing how it's coming out and you're like, oh my gosh, this looks so pretty. Or I don't like that. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite. I like getting the, the sewing parts done. And then when you see it come by piece by piece, especially if you're working on a really honk and big thing, uh, you see it piece by piece come together because you're doing a chunk and a chunk at a time. Um, kind of like that uh, big, huge 72 inch by 72 inch uh, free pattern that we did for the McDougals. Um, I did big chunk square, 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 square. And uh, to see it all come together after that was really kind of cool. It's like, oh, wow, I made something. <laughs> and it looks good. <laughs> All right, so now we just got our three rows. We're gonna do a quick little press. It doesn't matter which way you do it, but because of these colors, I'm gonna press to the red. But um, for some, for some, it, it really, you can just press your seams open. Okay, so we'll just do that one real quick. And of course, this doesn't matter because it's red on red. 
And this is a great way to uh, bust your scraps too. Every single one of these could have been a different color, like the same tone, like an orange or yellow or something like that, and leave these ones out here as a total opposite one, right? I'm sure you can come up with many creative ways to do this cute little box, little fabric organizer. And I like the way Gina has it all, it's the way she explains it, how she has a little teacup in hers and uh, like a little gift with like a gift card and stuff. And I thought that was really, really cute. I shouldn't really bump my elbow. I really whacked it the other day and it's so sore. It's not funny when you hit your elbow. No matter when anybody, everybody else is laughing. You crying in a corner. <laughs> it hurt. It really did. I gotta go to probably breathe. Can you see it? It's a big old bruise. <laughs> I know, stop your whining and get sewing. <laughs> okay, okay. Hopefully the table's not shaking like crazy. I told Pop I'd slow her down a bit, so. I'd go within the speed limit of the zones. <laughs> How boring. Gonna make myself a little speed stop sign for the shop. <laughs> Pedal to the floor, <laughs> all the way. All right, give this a little press. I'd probably press these seams open just for uh, bulk sake. Just slip right down, press those little seams. There we go, very nice. So we'll just do a press. There we go. Now the other set. Super easy. And then we really just, we take the same size. This ends up being 14 by 14. Can I knock something down? Or maybe I didn't. 14 by 14. Um, so you just divvy it up. If you, like I said, if you want to use two big solid pieces, you don't have to make uh, the pattern. It's, uh, it comes together really quite fast. All right, so we're just gonna sew that one down and then we're gonna attach the, the two, the backing and the batting and the top all together. Like this is the longest part of it really, it's just sticking these, uh, this nine patch together. Actually, I saw a really uh, interesting quilt block, uh, quilt, pa uh, quilt the other day. It had nine patches like this with all different colors, and then it was cut on an angle, and then the opposite side was white, and then you had your color, and then it was all put out, and it's like in a star shape. I thought, hmm. plans, put that on the list. <laughs> I really liked it. It's a good way to see. I don't know. I find a nine patch kind of boring, but um, you can always cut it. There's the disappearing nine patch. There's, you know, you cut it and then you get like the little uh, square or little checkerboard in the center. You know, you give it a couple of cuts and flips and so on and so forth. So yeah, there's, there's lots of nice ones there too. So many blocks to do, so little time. Okay, so there's our top or our outside, I guess. And we are going to put our backing, or inside, I don't know, whichever way, the other side. Okay, I cut it a little bit big. Okay. Do stretch it out a smidgey here. There we go. And we are gonna put these together. Okay. With right sides facing, the batting on the outside, okay. Of course, I made mine a little bit big so I can trim it. You just want to place it in there nice and center. And then you take either your ribbon or your uh, little rope or whatever it is that you got going on. I, I chose to use a little bit more chunk of that black satin uh, bias tape, but I did a little white stitch down the side. So from here, you cut your two pieces in half. You want to give yourself a good enough to tie a bow. So what is this? About 18 inches for each piece. So. Make sure you got like a good 40, 40 inches for, for something to tie with. And you're just gonna tuck it this way. It's twisted because I sewed it. You're gonna make sure it gets tucked right in here, in that corner, on the nice angle. Okay, see one, one I did wonky. Oh, and actually, no, that's not the one. One I did wonky, you can see that wonky one there. And the one I did okay, so lesson learned. Line it up properly, 
give it a nice pin so it stays steady in that. And then you're going to do the opposite corner, the complete opposite one right over here, the same way. Okay. Make sure it lines up. Put it right in the corner. Or if you put it off to the side, make sure they're both off to the side, whatever, whatever, so they look the same. Okay. Now we'll pop a little pin in here and we're going to leave a gap in one of these spaces wherever here to turn it right side out. Okay. So let's just sew around. Get this done real quick here. All right. Okay, we'll leave a section of the red to turn right side out. And you always want to backstitch if you got it. If you're leaving that section to turn right side out, uh, do a little backstitch because as you're turning it right side out, uh, it just reinforces those stitches right at that point where your the fabric is folding and, and shifting, and um, and you won't rip. You won't actually rip your fabric. Okay, just stop a quarter of an inch away. Come all the way around. I think she actually pressed all of her seams open, but I'll keep mine to the to the dark side for the red there. And make sure when you're coming across to your little ribbon, you are enclosing it. Make sure it's all getting stitched on there on both sides. This little corner, I think that's what happened to mine. Maybe one shifted. Okay, up. Vibrating. <laughs> I went up a little bit. Okay, I'll back down. <laughs> okay, pedal up. Almost there. Make sure you're getting in the other side, the opposite side where that ribbon is too. Make sure you're getting it all the way in there. It's nice and even. And then back to just bef just after the red, because I don't want to. I want. I don't want really want to compromise this seam right here. So I'm coming, as you can tell on that side. I came right. I started before. I started before the, that seam, so I made it secure. So I'm not going to rip it. I'm not going to lose it. I'm not going to waste all that time and effort that I just did by putting that seam together and pressing it. So I'm coming past the red a bit and back stitching, just reinforcing it. Now I want to take the rotary cutter and give it a trim all the way around. The big ruler, little ruler, doesn't really matter. Just make sure you're giving your quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, just pop it off to the side here. Okay. And what I don't use, to re like re recycle to use in the uh, quilt shop, I give to um, kindergartners. I know a couple of teachers, and I also give to the um, little Sunday schools. And they use all my little bits and bobs like crazy. It's awesome to see and getting into. Okay, sorry, trim your corners. I just thought of that before we were about to flip. Okay. Just knop them off. Don't get too close to your stitches, but it just helps alleviate some of that uh, bulk as you're trying to turn it out. So when you're turning it out, you put your you try to grab between. Don't grab between the batting, or that's not going to help at all. So you got to get your two right sides together. Grab your other corner and ease it out. That's why reinforce those stitches. We don't want those to rip. We don't want the fabric to rip because sometimes you're trying to get a bit of a bigger bulk through a tinier hole. You know. So we just work it out. Flip it, flip it, flip it. Okay. Take little corners. My favorite, one of my favorite tools in the shop is a chopstick. And um, it's because it's rounded, it gets right into those corners without actually poking or um, going through. Because I've used a tip of a pair of scissors and ruined my project. So it's very disappointing. There was nothing I could really even patch. So it's my own own mistake. So lesson learned. Chopstick it is. Okay, now we have this cute little thing with some weird ties. A kite. <laughs> it's a hat. <laughs> 
It's everything you want it to be. Okay, so we will sew it all around. You never know. You could think of other things for things. Um, we'll snip that off. Then you want to do a sew all the way around, okay, to secure all those, those little, that seams and, and reinforce them a bit. See, go all the way around the outside edge, okay. Hopefully we can uh, do this in a timely manner. Give this a quick little press press here. It looks really cute. I love it. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, all right. Now, just quick around. Of course, you can use a decorative thread. You could use uh, a funky stitch. You can do whatever you like. And try and keep a, a ride, ride either the edge of your foot, or I try to go between my this metal part of the foot and the plastic part of the foot. To me, that it's, it's about a quarter of an inch or close to thereof. Seems to work out well for me and the patterns that I'm using it for, so. Find a nice comfortable spot to ride, let, let your fabric ride up against it so you know you're being consistent all the way around. Okay, shift. And the next part is, is, is really the last step, and it's the kind of, I wouldn't say the most tedious, but you really just may need to make sure you are enclosing the inner fabric by pinching it with the outer fabric to get that, to get that edge right there, to get that little edge. You're enclosing it, and you're giving it a little, you're giving it some shape. You're giving it that box some shape. Right. Okay, so now that is all sewed up all the way around. Looks really cute. Now here's here's the, um, okay, you could sew down here too. You can do those lines as well. But you're going to pinch it, making sure you've got that red fabric in there too. Give a little pinch. Give a little pin. Okay. Everything will keep up. All right, so don't sew all the way down. You just want to go from this point to this point, and then from that point to that point, and you know, this point to that point. You're just coming in to meet. You're just doing that little V, that little one on each side sort of thing, okay? Like I said, you could change it so it was red thread. You could have green thread if you were doing Christmassy stuff. I'm just keeping it to the to the white and the red that I got going on here. Okay. Sometimes it gets a little thick up here, so you're gonna have to kind of be a little bit of a bully and give it a push. Okay. And just come just before, just before that final center patch, okay? Give it a cut. See how it came just before? I'm not sure if you can see that, but just before it was like maybe three stitches and I'm at 2.4. I'm just trying to get it nice and tight. I want it to I want it to stay there. So this one I'm going to come the opposite direction, but I'm making sure I'm coming up a couple of couple of stitches. Do a little back tack. And all the way to the top. Cut. Okay. Okay, so there's one side or one little bit there. We'll work on the other side and then we'll work in the opposite direction, okay? So we're just taking it, we're folding it completely in half, making sure that our inner fabric is enclosed in our little pinch here, giving it a couple of little pins to hold it, and then sewing down. I, I don't like that tiny one. Oh, you're gone. I don't know how you end up in my bin. There's another, there's a green one around here too that's a tiny one. I don't like tiny pins. Okay, coming from the top. Maybe you can say to him, give it a little bit of a push, be a bit of a bully with it. Or aggressive. 
I don't want to say be bullied because that's not nice. Just want to give her all a push, okay? And come back and trim. Oh, see, I kind of went a little naughty under there. We can come up, trim up all those threads, okay? Did I get the other side? Nope, oh, it's right here, okay? All right. Four more to do, and then we're done. Okay. And of course, I just folded this. I made sure it was tucked in there, or felt tucked into me. Okay. So if you don't want a pin, you don't have to, as long as it got all in there. Okay. So now we can do the opposite direction. Do this side right here. Okay. Doing the same thing. I'm pinching it. I can feel that I have both sets of fabric under there, as well as my batting. Just a little bit before and back tack. Okay, and next one. And then we're done. Like and you can um you can put a button on if you want to, you don't have to. You just attach the opposite corners together, which I will show you in just a moment. Two more little lines. Okay, did that go okay? Did I get pinched? I probably went, see, I probably went, look, I went about two stitches too far on that one. So I'll probably pick that out. But right now, we're just going to finish this off so you can see what I was up to on this beautiful weekend of some showers and some sun. <laughs> That's what literally it's been this whole summer. It's been showers and sun and showers and sun. But uh, I have to say it's better than last summer because last summer was so dry. We couldn't even have fires. You could barely even have a barbecue. Everybody, everybody was worried about everything catching fire. So, all right. Oops. Okay, that did not stitch all the way. I missed that. See how I was supposed to seal up that edge there? Whoopsies. All right, we'll pin that and I'll fix it later. Which just means taking out those stitches and re-sewing it. Okay, so what we have here is we have our finished um, little little baggie holder thingy. So we take these two parts here, and this is where you could put in a button. You could, like I did a black button on this one right here. There's a white button here if I so wish, or you can just stitch it together. Um, and then it just, uh, here we'll put that right there. Hide the knot in the white. Okay, we'll just stitch it one right on, just dip the corner right on top of each other. I just came down through all those layers. You may need a thimble to help you with your needle. Don't It hurts when it goes through your finger and not always through your project. <laughs> all right, so I'll just put a little couple of whip stitches in here so you can see what I was doing. And then we'll tuck it under. Okay, doo doo, that'll hold that. A snip. I say, you can put your button on if you like. And then you say, well, say you put, you know, you're giving a gift of a really cute pin cushion, okay? You take that, you go under one. I think that was there, and then she went that way, and then this one was th that way, I think. And then she tied it tight, so they came together. But I'm probably doing it wrong. And then the night little bow. <laughs> <laughs> there, and you can just carry that. Like you can put little, you can put your little fabric stuff. You put your little, um, you know, scrappy bits, remnant bins, uh, a remnant bits, anything. You maybe put uh, all your marking pins or something in there, or something like that. Or, or if you know you've got a big collection of uh, white scrappy bits, put all your white scrappy. Bits. I mean, the, the 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 options are endless for what you could use it for. Um, I know she went under and around on one of them, so I'll have to watch the video again. See, so I figure how she how she wrapped that up. It was just this. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably making it far more complicated than it really needs to be. So, because that's just me. <laughs> As Pop is nodding. <laughs> Anyways, it's really cute. It's a great way to use up your scraps and, and make some unique gifts for people. Uh, like I said, great hostess gift. You're off to a barbecue party. Make up one of these. Toss some cookies in it. You know, homemade cookies, and it's something really cute. They could probably put all their little napkins in there on the on their you know, on their, the barbecue table or something like that. All right. So thanks for watching, everybody. And we will see you tomorrow for live stream at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to ask us in the video. Um, 
Uh, I realized I've never done live stream before, so I didn't realize the chat didn't stay with the video, and so I was just hmm and then ha and then yes and then no, and so I will uh, I will say the questions if I can, or Pop or the Munchkin Kid will say the questions, and I will we will answer. So it will all be. And now nobody will get lost because when I was watching it after the fact just to see how I could improve, I was like, what's going on? <laughs> so I was lost as well. So I apologize for that. We're living and learning and we're trying to improve every single day that we try to videotape. OK, so we'll see you for tomorrow for the live stream and then on Long Arm Wednesday. Uh, we're actually going to actually I have to get permission first. So I'll ask her. She's actually the one who had the idea for this. She did a beautiful. Um, hexagon star quilt and I want to ask her if I can do it up on a longer Wednesday so if not then we'll be doing something else okay so have a great weekend and we'll see you tomorrow thanks everybody bye bye